Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today I'll be discussing a case of a young adult who presented to our ER with complaints of fever and headaches since about two days. Can okay. we begin, sir? Yes, yes. So there was this 33-year-old male with no previously known comorbidities who presented to our ER with only complaints of fever, with low-grade fever, with severe headaches since about two days. So in our initial 10-second assessment, patient was conscious and oriented. In our primary survey, Patient's airway appeared patent. There was no increased pooling of saliva or any kind of mucoid secretions noted. And breathing-wise, patient had bilaterally air entry to be equal with respiratory rate of 24 cycles per minute, maintaining saturation of 96-97% on room air. And um, circulation-wise, patient had normal um, regular rhythm with a heart rate of 92 beats per minute with a blood pressure of 110 over 80 millimeter mercury and all peripheral pulses were palpable. Disability-wise, patient had a full GCS score of 15 over 15 with pupils being bilaterally reactive and uh, symmetrical in size of about 2.5 mm each. Exposure-wise, patient had a regular a normal body temperature of 98.8 degree Fahrenheit with a, a blood sugar levels of 104 milligram per deciliter. So, uh, in our, uh, uh, mo uh, there was nothing to, uh, uh, in primary, since primary survey was quite clean, there was no primary adjunct to be used. What is the importance of pupil examination in a headache case? So, uh, if at all <coughs> headache is secondary to meningitis or increased intracranial pressure, there can be anisocoria seen or pupils can be sluggish mm. or pa patient can, uh, if at all patient has taken any toxins, which can affect the CNS again, pupillary meiosis, midriasis, depending upon the toxicology, uh, depending on the toxin that is taken, okay. it will come to most important is anisocoria. anisocoria. So, in our sample history, this patient did not have any previously known comorbidities and he presented to us with on only complaints of fever and headache, which he had since about three days. And to his persistent fever, but it would reduce when the patient would take any uh, antipyretic. And for uh, pain, he was just uh, managing at home with regular analgesic until it became too severe, which is why he came to our hospital. So, um, in our uh, exam, he does not have any uh, negative history wise, he did not have any uh, focal neurological deficits like any uh, or any cranial nerve palsies. Mm -hmm. Patient did not have any altered sensorium, no history of trauma. Uh, he did not have vomiting. Suppose there is a, a like movement of eyes are reduced mm. on one side. What are the differential diagnoses you suspect? Movement of eyes. With severe headache, ah. patient is having uh, ophthalmoplegia. On one side, eyes are not moving, bulged. CV, the, CV, uh, cortical cerebral. Uh, thrombosis. Thrombosis. Thromb then, other than that, orbital, orbital cellulitis. Orbital that cellulitis. is very important. We always think that only neurological cause produces cellulitis of orbit. That produces sometimes severe pain. Mm. Movement will be restricted. Okay. CVT is correct. What you told is correct. Where also you get oh. <coughs> cavernous, cavernous venous thrombosis. thrombosis. So, uh, then patient did not have any history of uh, lifting any uh, load to the head or any trauma or uh, persistent projectile vomiting. Okay. Uh, so, basically when a patient comes with fever and headache, differential diagnosis becomes more important than the uh, com while coming to the diagnosis. Mm. So, we had to rule out acute bacterial meningitis or en meningitis, meningitis in general or any local eye infection that can cause headache cavernous venous uh, thrombosis or if patient has any eye issues mm. but then patient will not have any refractive errors but he will not have any infective fever history as such or if patient has altered sensorium we'll have to think of meningoencephalitis all these DDs have to be thought about and uh, any facial uh, infection including ear, nose, throat can cause fever and headache. Okay. So, uh, then uh, in our systemic examination, eye extraocular muscles were checked, nystagmus was ruled out and then uh, patients had full vision. So, there was no uh, visual disturbances or color vision issues and then uh, we have to properly examine the ear, nose and throat mm. and uh, find out for any uh, foci of infection if there is any ear discharge or uh, in the nose any nasal discharge if there is nasal discharge whether it is watery or whether it is mucoid 
and what's the color of the discharge has to be looked mm-hmm. into any obvious deformity especially if patients who have dns they will have recurrent sinusitis issues so that deformity uh, nose that has to be checked any foul smelling discharges mm-hmm. there or um, then in uh, throat again any uh, erythema or any tonsillitis issues or any abscess or salivary glands all of that has to be post nasal drip post nasal drip um, halitosis mm. uh, dental hygiene mm. all these even dental infection can cause fever headache. and headache so proper ent examination was elicited and when we did that we found that the patient had uh, sinus tenderness there are certain sinuses that we can elicit tenderness in and find out if the patient has sinusitis like if at all we press in the infraorbital rim um, that can uh, de- depict, uh, depict maxillary sinusitis mm-hmm. or if it is supraorbital ridges if, if they are pressed for tenderness then frontal sinus uh, frontal sinus or uh, more towards the medial canthus if we uh, apply pressure and if the patient elicits tenderness then it is more ethmoidal okay. so these sinus these are the places where we can check for sinusitis and this patient had ethmoidal and frontal sinus tenderness Tendal. was present so uh, so our dd from meningitis and all the other things we now narrowed it down to acute sinusitis we still okay. weren't sure whether it is bacterial or viral okay uh, so with this um, patient was conservatively started uh, on treatment and other systemic examination including respiratory system and cardiovascular system when you screen. have a sinusitis patient we have to always check that whether a past history of sinusitis, sinusitis. is there or not uh-huh. because acute sinusitis organisms are different chronic sinusitis they are predominantly gram negative anaerobes like that uh-huh. and patient should also be checked for any lymph nodes uh, jugulo uh, digastric homo di- uh, uh, homohyoid all these uh, uh, lymph nodes have to be checked and also for the neck mobility to check for any s- cervical spine issues because mm-hmm. even vertebral infections can cause fever and headache and neck mobility all of this has to be checked and uh, this patient did not seem to have any of those issues and red flag signs like persistent headache of more than 1 or 2 degree fahrenheit altered sensorium any pupillary changes all of these are red flag signs and uh, um, these also has to be seen in a patient because this will uh, warrant emergency referral urgent okay. referral so these red flag signs have to be kept in mind and um, uh, patient's oral cavity also did not show any features of pharyngitis or tonsillitis as such so and then um, systemic examination was quite clean so now moving on to the management investigation wise regular routine investigations can be sent uh, like uh, to check for any infective blood parameters c reactive protein total counts uh, uh, these have to be sent and other other than that uh x-ray wise x-ray pa- of the paranasal sinuses can be taken now these x-rays come in different views like open water view or um, so mostly what we do is an open water view uh, which even shows the pinoid sinus so or waters view all these uh, uh, views of the paranasal sinuses can be taken and when we did this patient uh, on um, x-ray generally these sinusitis are air filled cavities so they have to be they appear black mm. but when the patient has sinusitis because of the collection of the mucoid secretions it look uh, the the uh, color, white will color will change and it will appear more opaque mm. so we generally compare the sinus the sinuses with the orbit, orbit. Uh, uh, ice uh, ice the uh, translucent translucent similar uh, mostly similar uh, so in this patient patient had um, the uh, frontal sinus and the nasal passage was found opaque oh. so with this so uh, that indicates pus there pu- okay. yeah pus or mucus in gray collection so now with this we can ask any leading questions of any foreign body mm. that he must have taken in or any deformity recent trauma all of these uh, even history has to be elicited in this and examination wise he should be looked for any deformity or any obvious tenderness um, uh, then um, apart from this so with this x-ray pns can be taken and then management would majorly revolve around conservative management and it takes about 5 enti- to 7 days entirely about a week for the patient to recover 
Now, in management, if the patient has thick secretions, then it mostly indicates a bacterial sinusitis. And we can start the patient on steam inhalation or intranasal saline spray. So, what saline spray does is it's a hypertonic saline. So, um, even with regular saline, the idea is that it will moisten the secretions and it will cause the secretions to loosen up. Yes. Uh, and Thickness will come down so that the uh, moment down. of the secretion will be faster, faster. removal will be faster. faster. So, with that saline spray and to some extent, uh, there is a certain role of steroids. Steroids for, can be used for a short term and short term usage will also have minimal side effects. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is best used in conjunction with saline spray after the secretions have moistened up. And apart from this, if it is secondary to allergy history, as some people, uh, if they are prone to allergies, they, they can have these symptoms quite often. So, in those patients, antihistamines also have, have, have has a role. Acutely, we don't give antihistamine because no. it, uh, that will again dry up dry the secretion. Up. Acutely, we give only saline uh, drops and uh, nebula, sorry. Uh, steam inhalation, antibiotics. Steroids also we have to be very careful in acute phase because we, we have to know whether it is a severe bacterial infection. Only in mild infections we can start a steroid. steroid. And long term usage can also cause hypertrophy of the turbinates. Uh, so then in antibiotics and uh, there are two ways to go about it. If mm -hmm. the sinusitis is secondary to viral then it will just, it is a self limiting thing but if it is bacterial then First line drugs like amoxicillin um, or um, uh, so yeah. normally initially you know, at, as a first episode of sinusitis it has to be gram positive whether it is ear infection throat infection sinus infection most of the time they are gram positive cocci so you can give amoxicillin augment in azithromycin mm. cefuroxim any drug which covers gram positive cocci will be enough mm. but if it is a chronic infection that's why we are taking a detailed history. If it is a chronic history, then you have to give something which cover gram positive also, sorry, mm. gram negative also. So, in this patient, we started a combination of uh, amoxicillin with uh, clovelinic acid. Okay. And uh, generally, the respiratory fluoroquinolones like moxifloxacin, levofloxacin, they are uh, uh, reserved for uh, chronic, chronic use because they are... Uh, uh, use uh, excessive use can cause resistance and a okay. lot of resistant strains of bacteria has been uh, known. So, uh, this patient was empirically started on antibiotics and along with that steam inhalation with saline uh, spray and um, intranasal um, what is that glucocorticoids okay. can be used for their management. Uh, then antihistamine nasal spray can be given. Okay. And antihistamines are to be used only if there is like a very strong allergy history in the patient. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there is no indication of it in acute bacterial sinusitis. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, the if, if, if at all it is left untreated, um, then uh, the infection can spread because all the passages, since they are connected, patient can end up with concomitant ear infection, throat Otitis. infection, and complication can be again meningitis, meningitis. also can. sometimes oh. rarely meningitis also can be caused oh that petrocytis okay all this it can spread to the cns so if it infection. is a diabetic patient chronic diabetic patient what else you uh, suspect other than Pseudomonas. simple sinusitis pseudomonas fungal fungal, 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 infection. fungal. there we have to be very careful it's a young boy without any comorbidity so we only suspect bacterial infection but if it is a oh, diabetic who is uncontrolled diabetes then you have to always suspect uh, uh, fungus and mycormycosis okay mm -hmm. so then uh, dna can be done mm. and then uh, samples for culture uh, gram smear mm. staining all this can be taken to find mm. out the organism but most of the bacterial sinusitis would be self-limiting and patient recovers in about a week okay. only in certain rare cases the infection can blow up and can spread to um, CNS, basal okay. skull, um, all you know, like long So, what ENT doctor advised in this case? Uh, DNA, sir. He's, okay. he's posted for DNA today. Okay. Then, uh, a negative history has to be taken. Uh, yeah. You want to add something? So, basically, uh, so suspect, uh, like a, a case like this comes actually once you are coming to your conclusion, it's more like a sinusitis. The main idea of treatment is only very conservative management because majority are viral only and a very few, like a low, small percentage is bacteria. Mm. 
back till again actually if you suspect you can start on like a broad spectrum like an augment or an amongst the club because the majority of the uh the syncosative agents coming in the lace like streptococcus pneumonia h influence and all which we covered by this kind of antibiotics but suppose the patient is having persistent headache or the like the pain is not going away there is periorbital edema there is a um, uh, difficulty in movement of eyes or there is actually any acute rotor sensorium and also any of the cranial nerves are feel suspect to be affected or something we have to further evaluate the patient so initially we don't we don't even have to go for an imaging but if the patient is complaining of persistent symptoms we can go for it like a basic uh, pns x ray and if it is not getting like a con- conclusive idea we have to go for further imaging like a ct or even mri should be re- taken to like further evaluate the patient because once the patient is having persistent symptoms the infection may have uh, like spread into the nearby areas it could be like an orbital cellulitis could be meningitis or meningitis encephalitis or it can even uh, go into like brain abscess and all those kinds of lesions can occur in this kind of cases especially in immunocompromised patients orbital cellulitis is one condition we mostly miss mm. if we don't suspect we'll miss we'll it, miss it so we have to be very careful mm. so we have to look for papillary edema we have to look for neck stiffness and all associated signs also in this kind of patients and also a dna and all this further evaluation is all, all again required in patients who are like having persistent symptoms we have to like take a sample for culture we have to look for the exact pathogen which is causing the this thing and depending on the culture and sensitivity we might have to change our antibiotics especially in case of diabetic and all those kind of patients we have to also rule out fungal etiology also so this is all a sort for patients who are having persistent symptoms and also having recurrent episodes again they may be having some anatomical deformities which may be like in making them prone for recurrent infections which could be like if can be dealt with by the ent people they had also should be dealt along with this treatment so initially the plan would be like supportive management like saline nebulization saline nebulization or saline in this thing a uh, wash could be given along with the conservative like an antibiotic can be given but uh, not improving then we have to like go for a like local endoscopy and see what is exactly causing the block or something and we have to like treat accordingly so this patient actually just like a basic acute sinusitis only and is recovering but the thing is in your persistent headache only we are treating him further because so head- what are the indications for imaging in this patient mri or ct whatever ah, imaging one is persistent uh, severe and persisting headache not relieved by even first or second line analgesia okay. second is periorbital so edema what analgesia we are giving in this initially we started with, with papicm tad but again we have to uh, hike up to tramadol mm-hmm. and once once we had even have to give fentanyl okay. so so this patient actually require nsaid mm. paracetamol is given mm. uh, tramadol is given mm. and then is yes, none of these things are anti inflammatory we have to give anti inflammatory mm. whether it is diclofenac or whatever it is mm. otherwise it will not subside so mm-hmm. it is inflamed mm-hmm. okay or okay. tetsensorium so, uh. then again he has a complaints of acute vision changes vision or changes uh, or any like uh, erythema around the eye or something mm. or any abnormal in extra or intraocular movements of thermoplegias and also any acute otter stiff mental status or any okay. complaints of neck stiffness or any signs of meningeal irritation in this ones uh, we have to go for image okay. like that in this patient we mainly go on because of the persisting headache, headache. Uh, so dna is planned today so we are awaiting the results okay like that uh Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thanks. Thank you.